Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Auditor of Hermacraft. So today I want to start by finishing the roof of the cow barn and then I want to get into trains. I'm really excited about that. Okay, so I, for some reason, yeah, had the wish to make the cow barn root out of chaired slabs, raw chaired slabs. Now, we could either go to a biome that has the stone type, which is thousands of blocks away, get some, bring it here, or we try to make it from scratch with the machines and materials we already have, so we can basically make it out of sand and dirt and a couple other ingredients. Let's quickly go down the rabbit hole, what needs to go into making chaired raw slabs. So we need stone, of course, craft into slabs, and we can get that by heating up the cobble with the lava source we have now. But we don't have any of this cobble type, um, but we can make it by combining loam dirt and sandy loam dirt. Unfortunately, don't have any of those dirt types. I have silty loam dirt, but we need specifically loam dirt. But we can also make that. If you look at the recipe, so the loam dirt is just clay, water in a mixer, uh, sand. We can use the white sand that I can get from breaking down the local gravel and guano. Here's a little bit of an issue. I have some guano, but I probably need a stack. So we need to make more of that. If you look into the recipe, get it from breaking down green sand. Yeah, the next green sand beach is also thousands of blocks away. But if you look at that, I can also break down schist gravel into green sand. And that's just schist cobble. And I can make schist cobble by combining sandy loam dirt again and silt dirt. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the recipe for silt dirt. Flint, white sand, Clay, bone meal, water, got all of that. Okay, let's also take a look at the sandy loam dirt. I need this just to make the schist cobble and then also later for the chaired cobble. That's also just saltpeter. I have a lot, not a lot of that. Then clay balls and white sand. So basically got everything, just a lot of crafting. And I need roughly about four or 500 blocks of the chaired cobble. Okay, so let's get going. So first I actually need a mixer that we also pump water into. I thought here in the back this would actually be a good spot. We have this little corner and there's a water source just a couple blocks away. So if I add a mixer that I already crafted and add it here, yeah, then we can easily run a, a pipe and a pump to get the water in there. Here you can see the water is really not far away. We got a little pond here plus cave entrance. That's maybe eight blocks away. So this should be set up correctly. Let's see if I change the direction of the pump now. If we will get some water. Yep, there we go. Okay, pretty neat. So check if the on-off switch works. Yes. Okay. Also turns out I do have silt dirt. So I don't need to make that at least. So I only need to make um, the loam dirt and the sandy loam dirt. Silt dirt is actually this one here. Silt grass. So I can just take it from here. Okay, I got 64 silt dirt. Now I need 192 sandy loam dirt. So let's make the first batch. Just gonna throw all the stuff in there. And there we go. Got some sandy loam dirt. Oh, it's gonna take a while. Got the sandy loam dirt. Next up is now making the schist cobble. You need to just fire the coal forge here and throw both the yeah, sandy loam and just silt dirt in there. And now we get granite cobble. Oh, something wrong. Schist cobble? Supposed to be... Oh, it needs a certain mixture. What? Silt dirt and sandy loam dirt. Made granite cobble. Okay, what if I... Throw it literally three and one. Then it works. Oh, okay. So what we can also do is just set a filter. And then, even if I don't have the right mix, it should still work. Yes. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, we lost some sandy loam dirt here. Some silt dirt. I have to make more. Okay, got eight stacks of schist cobble now. Let's break it down. First into gravel and then guano next. Using the 32 guano, I can now make 256 loam dirt. Okay, let's turn this back on. Let's make one first. And then I actually take it out really quick. 
because it actually turns it into mud. Uh, if I wouldn't, then we can set up a filter so it doesn't get yeah, turned into mud all the time. Okay, uh, let's throw the rest to Guano, clay, and white sand in there. I also made an equal amount of sandy loam dirt again, so let's try this out. Two loam dirt, two sandy loam dirt, four shared cobble. Okay, set up a filter as well, just to be safe. And then we can throw the whole stacks in there. And now we can use the new machine with the lava source in order to turn it all into raw stone. 16 stacks in total. It should usually take 10 seconds. There we go. All raw stone. And there we go. Got our chat raw slab. Basically without leaving the house. Truly an introvert stream. What we need in the end was basically just white sand and things you can make out of white sand. Or yeah, we got the desert gravel in the beginning that we actually turned into the white sand. In the end we can make a cobalt generator that makes rhyolite, I believe. That can also be broken down into white sand. So in the end we can make pretty much everything from the cobalt generator. We could already somehow with aqueducts uh, and flowing lava make a cobalt gen right now. But I think I'm just gonna wait until we have the bucket actually. We're not that far away from it. So I guess one of the next things after I made the train that also will help us actually. Uh, because it's gonna go towards the Garni right vein I found. If you dig that stuff up, you can make black steel. And that's the fifth highest tier. I think that we just need bismuth as the last yeah, ingredient to make blue and red steel, which we need for the bucket. So we can also make that progress soon. Another thing that I really want to make now is actually a mob farm and a tree farm. So those will be plans for the next couple of episodes. And then we can yeah, focus on automating a couple more fun things in the game. All right, so I'm going to yeah, place the slabs now. It's not going to be a too steep of a roof. I'm thinking just one high of the slabs every second block. I think that is quite realistic. Like the cow barns in Bavaria where I lived, they, they kind of look similar to this. So that's where I got the inspiration from. And the cow barn is finally finished. Those were some expensive building materials here. Oh my god. Okay, let's actually take a look inside, check up on the cows. They are already wear and tear 96%. So we won't get too much more milk from this, but we already have 56 buckets in the tank. Let's actually check. We can probably even raise it up one yeah, layer higher here and maybe go a little bit lower. Once you have like five cows in there, this will fill up rather quickly. Okay, let's also check up on the cows. So yeah, the normal cows are pregnant again to familiarity 35. They already gave birth a while ago. But I only got one additional baby cow from this. Only bulls that I have way too many of already anyway. So yeah, time to time come here and feed this cow. But yeah, it's at 48. I got still one year and eight months left. So progress <laughs> will be quite slow the next two years and probably also not too much milk. I guess once they gave birth, like yeah, once or twice more, they will be sent over to, to make milk. So we won't run out of it. There's actually one more thing I'm really curious about. If there's any benefit of having a familiarity 100 cow. So I actually got two that are also pregnant there. So in total we got six cows. The alpacas, we actually got two pieces of wool when we shear them. Do we get two buckets of milk from such a cow? Time to find it out. Okay, let's see. Just in case, I brought three buckets. There is one ready to milk. Okay, holding three buckets doesn't work. <laughs> what about two? <laughs> Probably doesn't work as well. No. Okay, let me just use the single bucket on this cow. Is it still ready to milk? No, it's a different one. So yeah. No, two buckets of milk, only one. Those poor alpacas must also feel really jealous. First the chickens, and now the cows got their own nice little place. But eventually we'll also build a barn for the alpacas. Now let's finally continue with some train technology. The trains are basically just way cooler minecarts. They can go 40 blocks per second instead of 8. And they're also 3 wide. They go on those train tracks here. We're gonna need to craft a lot of those. So we will need some smooth slabs. Okay, we can make those now easily. 
And then we need to add steel rods to the deployer. And then last step, press in with the mechanical press. All right, that should be easy to do. I have a bit over 64 steel left. Let's actually take 64 of those and uh, turn it into train tracks. Okay, so we're making steel rods here in the meantime. All right, got some smooth slabs. We're gonna put that on here. And then just give the deployer the steel rods. Oh yeah. Oh my god. I should pick it up. Oh no, there's all single ones. Oh boy. Okay, let's make a couple, but this could get annoying. Oh no. He probably wanted to have a setup for this. So this is definitely slightly annoying, but still okay. Just need to make like 16 at once. Take me out of steel rods. There we go, and then we can complete them here. Not too bad. Alright, so I got 256 train tracks now, but I used up almost all of my steel, only have 4 ingots left now. So I'm making more here with the minimum size blast furnace. Still need to get the kaolinite. Okay, then let's lay some tracks. Okay, let's get started here. Let's place the first train track. Okay, there it is. It's just like normal minecarts, but I think there's also a mode where you can click on the last train track and then you don't need to place every single one manually, you can just do this instead. And if you put some blocks in your offhand as well, then we'll also place blocks under those tracks. Okay, so you want to go up oh, yeah, way further. Actually, probably as far as we can go, too far away. So there is a limit. I guess then up to this point. So this costs us 28 tracks and 50 building blocks. Okay, yeah, let's check it. Yep, so places blocks below. Okay, so where do you even want to go with this? So my plan in the long run would be to make a train track towards east. So we could actually make some sort of a vacation home or second base at Big Lake with the awesome landscape. So if you follow a line just straight towards east, so a lot of obstacles like rivers, smaller lakes here, mountains, I need to make some tunnels below, but yeah, we would come out around here at Big Lake. Maybe we also take a different route and don't cross the mesa or something like that. We will have to see. Um, so that would be awesome. It's like 8,000 blocks away. That means I would need 8,000 of those train tracks. That means I need uh, 2,000 steel ingots. But I'm nowhere close to making this because I don't have the coal for it. Mm, it might be close now if we have like 1500 charcoal but I don't have um, yeah, the iron for it or the flux and so on and if the minimum size blast furnace it would take forever. Uh, we definitely want to automate a couple more things first before we can actually do this but at least for now I want to yeah, lay the rest of the train tracks. We can click this again and let's see can we make it over that hill at least. Follow that. Can connect. Too far away. Okay, guess up to this point is possible. Yep, it's going straight. Okay, let's see. It seems a bit problematic. No, it still can connect. Okay, a nice distance already got covered, but I only have 35 train tracks left. But now there's a ravine ahead, so it's nice. The last thing you can actually do. Let's actually make a bridge across the ravine. See? Should line up here. Yes, can connect. There we go. Now we can cross the ravine. So no more, once this is all finished, so no more falling into ravines with the horse to rescue it or yeah, crossing rivers. It's gonna be so much nicer and faster. I mean, 8,000 blocks at 40 blocks per second. It's actually not too long. Now that we have some train tracks, we also want to make use of them and yeah, use some actual trains. I looked into it already, so we mostly need to craft those train casings. Out of those, we can make those bogies that you can assemble a train on. Then we need a train station and at least train controls. 
train signals and train observers won't be necessary right away only if you have multiple trains going or if you use them uh, without a player okay but train casings that's what we need to make that's basically a brass casing so copper and just a stripped lock plus a sturdy sheet and unfortunately this requires nickel so there is just powdered obsidian that we pour some nickel on and then we currently press it twice Powdered obsidian. We already have a little bit of obsidian, if you remember. We got 14, so we can get a good amount of the powdered obsidian. The nickel is a bit of a problem right now, uh, because that's actually the Garnier right that I want to mine in the next episode, pretty much. But we can probably get it. Um, if you look at the small Garnier right, is there maybe the right cobble type around? Diorite. <laughs> Yes, that's actually what I dug up. I mostly converted it actually into magma blocks already, but I have some left. So maybe we don't need a lot. Seems we only need like 50 millibuckets to make one sturdy sheet. Uh, maybe I just actually turn the diorite into some nickel with the washing. It's probably the best now. So I will need like two train casings for the actual train. Then the train station needs one more. And then I need two of those. So if I get like three nickel ingots, it should be enough already. That's actually a good amount of diorite I have. Hopefully we can get enough garnier right from this. So let's wash it. I might need to set up the filter. I guess at some point if you get so many different things from, from different stone types, it might be best to actually blacklist all the cobble instead of whitelisting all the stuff we get from it. Seems some cinder ball left over. That's um, redstone. Okay. Just stick into this, pick it up, and adjust the filter. Although we actually have a trapdoor on top, though, you can also reach it from there. Ten Garnier, right? So if we crush this, how much would this give us? One nickel. No. I actually forgot that besides the loose diorite in the chest here, I also had a toolbox that was also filled with diorite. So if I take all of that, then we could maybe get like three ingots. I got 10 more Garnier right? That's actually not a lot. Got a better amount of tin and bismuth, although it's also not too noteworthy. Okay, let's see. So as far as I know, we have a 20% chance to actually get a crushed uh, nickel ore from breaking this down with the first batch we were actually unlucky that we only got one let's see we get this time two that's about average so we got the three i actually wanted oh that was close it was all the diorite um so there's definitely a point going to that garnier right way next time okay i actually had 33 obsidian that's when the quarry got stuck the second time i guess let's see how much crushed obsidian we get from this What? Let's get obsidian back. Yeah, can we just put it in again? Ah, interesting. Okay, so you get one for one crushed obsidian and then some obsidian back. Probably a certain chance. Okay, but it's uh, more than we need already. Let's heat up the nickel ore. It actually has a really high melting point, only at white. Could I put some bituminous coal in there? Okay, guess I'm gonna wait a little bit as this heats up further in there because I need to run over to the spout. And what only says very hot? So I'll put it back there. But an actual ingot mold. Ah, okay. It's also heated. Let's make a bit of space there. Okay, and rush over. There's no milk left. There's milk left! No! <laughs> I need to clear it real quick. Uh, do I have bread left? Of course not. Uh, I need to make bread. Okay, let's quickly make some bread here. Bucket we have. Let's make dough. There we go. Heat it up. Oh. Shift click. There we go. It was this one bucket of milk I got from the cow that was at familiarity of 100. I just dumped it in there. Okay. 
Okay, this will turn into bread because I'm hurrying up because I actually wanted to start up the blast furnace. So I can turn this system on. I could already do it. Oh, the nickel melted again or what? No, it just cooled off. Mmm, what a stress. But I guess now we can get it. Is it solid? It's solid, no. Hopefully the vessel is actually a better choice. What happened to the ingot molds was once I heat it up enough, it went back into the crucible. It also happens with the vessel. It's actually so dumb. Okay, it is molten right now. I rush over. Is it solid? Oh my god. <laughs> Do I actually need to lay a pipe now? I guess heating it up in the charcoal forge instead of the crucible it is. Takes a little bit longer, but where should it go now? Let's see, brilliant white. I think that's the hottest. Come on. There we go. Okay, this way it works. Okay, let's do it. It's probably gonna give us half finished ones again. Yep. Unprocessed obsidian sheets. Okay. At six. And then we need to use them on the press again. Like twice. Oh, does it doesn't. One step. Neat. Okay, I got six in total. And then just grab the brass casing. And we're gonna press this on this. Should be around here. No, it's copper casing. Do we have a brass casing? Yes. Okay. Uh, was it the deployer, right? Yeah. Deployer. Neat. Okay, now we got six train casings. So I'm gonna need two for the trainer. Uh, actually only one, but I think if two it looks nicer. And then I need the train station. Compass. And then two of those. Oh no, I need to make the precision mechanism again. This was this thing you had to actually <laughs> use the sterling silver for and do a lot of steps. Alright, I quickly do that. Okay, I got the train station and the train controls, but I also need some seats. That's actually quite expensive. It requires a whole wool block, which is made out of four wool cloth, which is made out of 16 woolion. So I need 64 woolion, and the woolion is made out of yeah, wool. So I need eight wool for one seat. It's quite expensive, but I have that. Just gotta use the automatic loom real quick. So can we even take the jute fiber out of this? Yes. Okay. Woolion in there. And let's turn it on. I actually got this wrong again. We're getting way more wool than I thought we would. So we're getting actually eight wool blocks out of this. So much better. Okay. Also, I think I can do this myself. Just four steps. Okay, let's do this. Let's make a train. Park the horse here. So the first thing we need, I think, is the train station. They gave me two from the crafting recipe. I think we need to click on the track first. And then we can place it on the side, yes. Then we can click on this and create a new train. And now it shows me where I need to place those bogies. I can do this with the train casing. Ta-da! And I can even, I think, assemble two into a bigger construction. Okay, so we got those bogies now. Here on top we can place blocks and glue it yeah, to the bogey. So basically like this. So we can make a little platform. I'm not gonna try to do anything fancy, but yeah, you can also be a bit creative. We're gonna make the train look. Guess I gotta glue this up there. Go. And glue it to this bogey. And glue this together. Okay, then we can also add the train controls. On both sides, so we can change direction again. 
in the seed. But it's basically for the entities so they're attached to the train and don't just like glitch through or fall off or whatever. Okay, I got a bit more space. I'm gonna add one more seat for the horse. I'm gonna try this out and here on the side place a chest and put some coal in it. Because you can only reach a certain speed if you go without coal and with the coal you can reach the full 40 blocks per second. Okay, this is actually within horse's jump height. Two blocks. Oh, we just right up there. <laughs> that also works. Okay, let's get off the horse and try to push it onto a uh, seat. Not quite. You can always make this larger, if it, even if it looks weird. <laughs> Okay, definitely in case we want to transport some animals, we need uh, some sort of contraption. Hmm. Okay, the horse took the seat. Alright, then is there anything else we need? That should be about it. Got one more train casing left over. Then we go to the station again. Wait, I still need to glue it on. So everything here needs to be glued. That should do it. Okay. Just for safety. And back to the train station and now we click assemble train. There we go, we got an official train. Oh I actually remembered something, we can actually change the look of the bogies as well. We click them again. It's probably too late for that. Next train. Okay, let's assemble again. Okay. So we got the coal in there, now we can't really access it. Now we can take a seat and start controlling the train. So just press W, go forward. Takes a while to reach max speed and I also think the elevation changes also slow down the train a little bit. Okay, to me it also looks like the speed bar might actually be a bit broken. Okay, so we reached the end of the track already. Now I could go backwards, but there we can't reach max speed. I could also actually pick up the train of the ranch and place it the other way, but it's just more convenient, just to also have controllers on the other side. Okay. But that's a train. That's gonna be way better once this is a bit longer, only 256 blocks. So to end the episode, I think I actually could, I'm gonna extend this train track by as much as I can do. I mean, we're kind of limited with the amount of iron we have, then with the amount of molds we have, and so on. Um, but maybe I can get it up to a thousand blocks at least. That would be kind of cool. Time to fire up the blast furnace again, but with this setup it's gonna take quite some time to get a decent amount. We could also automate it a little bit more. What we could actually do is we always get this pig iron out. So here we could probably have some sort of a filter using a funnel, all the pig iron instead of going up to the chest uh, will go to the right and it's then put through the whole turning into high carbon steel ingots, turning into steel ingots and then it's put back onto the belt. Probably just need to move those barrels here to the side. I guess this area here, I mean, it's probably gonna be some further expansion uh, of this whole system. Yeah, we can move it over there. Probably gonna do the next episode though. We are also really low on the ingot molds here, so we can maybe go for another 128 steel, but then we should stop so we don't completely run out of it. Okay, so 512 more tracks it is, I guess. Back to laying tracks, so the fewer elevation changes we actually have, the better probably. So sometimes there's a couple obstacles, like the yeah, those rocks that need to be removed. Here's the guy actually gonna make a bridge. It could look okay, just gonna bridge out of the NSI bricks and then place the tracks above. So in total we now have 800 meters worth of train track. Time to test it out. It's gonna be so much fun in the end to ride this. Oh my god. Yeah, I can also do F5 to zoom out a little bit. I think in the beginning I have too many elevation changes. It slows everything down a little bit. Like here I could have just kept it on the same level. I have like a little bridge. 
Yeah, of the this hill, I kept it mostly flat. I think that's just better. So we can go faster with this. Oh man, I love this so much. I just always had the opinion that like the fastest way of travel should also require the most effort. Like in vanilla, it's the other way around. The fastest way of travel, yeah, except some technicalities at this point, but for like 99% of the players is just the elytra. Then there's ice boats, but just slightly faster. I think, yeah. <laughs> Something like this would have been great instead of the elytra, but it is just my personal opinion. Like a lot that goes on in Terra Firma Croft is actually to my liking. No elytra, no nether, fast travel, and all of that stuff. Like, the game is just way more immersive this way. Alright, that's all for the day, guys. So the plan for next episode is to get that Garni ride from the big vein, and then we can hopefully progress all the way up to red steel already. We only need that nickel, really. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.